Thank you, Choir, for that wonderful message. Brothers and sisters of Christ, today is uh, Youth Sunday, so we are recognizing the significance of our youth in the life of our church. In light of this, uh, uh, in light of this theme, I entitled my sermon, Overcoming Discontinuities and Disruptions, based on the two texts that were read a while ago. So for my introduction, let me have this uh, illustration. In 2016, the URC celebrated its 60th anniversary. URC, uh, Rubin, Rubin, Universal Rubina Corporation. I was privileged to attend the event because someone who works for that company invited me. And one of the executives of that company chronicled how the company expanded through innovations throughout the year. And one of the most striking statements that I heard from this from one of the speakers is that from that time on, it is a guarantee that the company was set up to stand or exist for another 60 years. So it is striking. From that time on, they envisioned that the setup of the company is guaranteed to last 60 years more. In other words, the company is future ready even when you factor in other possible entrepreneurial obstacles. Yesterday, I tried to search how they performed during the pandemic, and based on what I saw, they performed well due to some measures and adjustments. In this world, there are things that we desire and labor for in order for them to last, or if possible, to make them permanent as long as we are alive. We want things that we value to transcend and remain untouched by the troubles that we encounter. There are things that we cherish in life that we would like to outlive our very lives. For believers like us, we may ask, how does such a view of doing business on earth relate to building God's kingdom, most specifically, ensuring the vitality of our faith community. Ano bang pinalaman ng mga business practices na ginagawa ngayon ng mga organisasyon sa buhay ng ating simbahan o ng lipunan ng mga malang ng palataya? Regarding the kingdom of God, I believe one of the things that would remain permanent in, in earth is God's kingdom. God's kingdom goes before the church. Even before the church, God's kingdom is already at work. However, the visible manifestation that God's kingdom is at work in the world is embodied by the church. We are the redeemed and redeeming community that is called by God. Although God is the one who calls the faith community into existence, Human response is essential in determining how it behaves. Kahit na Diyos ang tumawag at gumawa at namuna para mabuo ang simbahan, napakahalaga ng response natin bilang member nito kung paano madedetermina paano ba tumatakbo at nakikiayon ang simbahan dito sa mundo. So despite the spiritual nature of God's children, they are affected by temporal concerns or the things that surround them. Kahit na spiritual ang pagkatawag ng Diyos sa ating buhay, tayo ay apektado ng mga temporary ng mga bagay na ating nakakasalubuha sa oras ngayon. So, as long as we are in this world, we may have aspirations for our church just like secular companies do. We aim to conquer new areas of ministry, expand the scope of its impact on our community, and have remarkable activities that show our commitment to God's people. In doing so, we pursue our aims by being attached to earthly resources and by being affected by its culture. Upang mapalagalit natin ang gawain ng Panginoon, tayo ay konektado 
dependent sa resources ng mundo at apektado din tayo ng kultura na kinapapalooban natin sa lipunan. However, when earthly attachments run contrary to our convictions, they can strike a significant blow to the heart of our beliefs. Elements in this world may attack spirit, spiritual truths and along with such an attack is a redefinition of many faith-based ideas. Dahil tayo ay nakapaloob sa isang kultura ng lipunan at may attach na tayo sa mga resources at mga taong nakapaloob dito, maaari sa pakikisalamuhan natin, nare-redefine din natin ang ating uh, ideas kung gusto pa na ng palataya. Such as the meaning of life, the meaning of human nature, spiritual identity, the meaning of freedom. And additionally, aside from our beliefs that could be affected by the things around us, the body of Christ at some point in time will face challenges and threats that can impede its organizational life. Tayo yung spiritual na community, pero basically we are still an organization like other organizations here on earth. And our organizational life pertains to how the church manages itself to advance as an entity or a group of people can be affected by the things around us. Because we cannot separate ourselves from the harsh and unfavorable realities that affect us, we are prone to experience disruptions and discontinuities as a community of faith. Okay. What do we mean by discontinuities and disruptions? Discontinuity means uh, a simple definition, no? it is a break, a gap, or lack of cohesion. A discontinuity. If a company discontinues producing a product, then that product will no longer be in the market. Na discontinue yung production. Ano naman yung disruption? A simple definition, an interruption in a sequence or flow. May pwedeng maantala ang isang gawain o isang bagay na ginagawa natin. Disruption po yun. Interruption. And in my view, there are many things that would uh, disrupt the church. There are many things that could uh, lead to the discontinuation of what the church is doing in our generation today. Uh, I believe there are many points, but let me share you at least three, three things. Okay? First, an even ministerial quality. Be even, or in other words, fluctuating quality of ministry. Let me uh, please bear in mind a lot that these are observations uh, based on growing up as a Methodist. So, simulan ng bata ko, hindi siya pa yung mga nakaka-affect talaga sa, sa, sa buhay pa ng palataya na nakakapag-disrupt. I believe you, you can also identify some things. Pero, from my point of view, ito po yung napansin ko. Una, an even ministerial quality. We have fluctuating, ano? fluctuating approaches, fluctuating implementation. For example, there was a time sa isang local church, yung pastor na pakagaling mag Bible study, dumami yung Bible study ng local church. Nung napalitan yung pastor, Hindi nag yung pag-Bible study, pumunti ang Bible study. Pero, nag-open ang mission. Okay? So, nag-fluctuate na. Nag-fluctuate, hindi na-sustain, kaya nagkaroon na ibang focus. And there are other areas in the ministries that we can observe na gano'n ang na-experience. So, nag-fluctuate. Also, yung tinatawag na leadership vacuum. This generation is asking, who would replace the great leaders after they were gone? Okay, we need to face the fact that there is a vacuum, vacuum in terms of leadership. But when we look at the great leaders of our church, who will be the next in line? And 
I will, I will be frank to you, mga kapatid. I believe, at least na ako dito, maraming tumitin nila kay Bishop Nakpil and uh, Bishop Alchea. And people are asking, who are the next in line sa succession of leadership? So, an even, an administrative quality. Second, unavoidable social circumstances. And the best example of this is the pandemic. It's the pandemic. Uh, I decided to, to review our last two attendance before the pandemic. So, March 1, 2020, we have 418 you know, attendance and uh, March 8, 381 before the pandemic and the next week, we present na yung church that we will have a face of, uh, online mode of worship to cooperate with the mandates and protocol given by uh, the Department of Health and uh, other agencies of the government. So since then, Tinitignan ko rin yung ngayon, somehow medyo hindi pa, natin, hindi pa tayo nakarecover at hindi lang po tayo nakaka-experience yan. A lot of churches, a lot of organizations have the same experience. And the third, I think the third challenge that causes uh, disruption and discontinuities, the unbridged generational or contextual disconnect. The aging process increases our distance from emerging trends and fads. And one of the one of a good example of this uh, point, when we look at the language of our hymns, they have good doctrinal content. But I believe the language is not appealing to, the, to today's generation. In a generation where young people prefers reading NLP versions of the Bible, version of the Bible or the Passion. At recently, may bago, Pinoy version, na nakapaklik na click sa kanilang uh, pagsasalita. Our hymns are still using the KJV language. And I believe if there is a good ministry that, can, that uh, the church, the UFC, UFC can put up, is to translate and update the the language of the hymns. Anyway, uh, I share this because I believe these things can cause discontinuities and disruptions in what we are doing. But let us return to the text that we read. According to Matthew 11, 12, from the NLP version, and from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it. According to the ESV version, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. What do we mean by, by these things? You know? Forcefully. When we say forcefully, you exert some effort. And I, uh, I refer to some commentaries. Uh, the term forceful originally means to explode or blow out or to force its way, as used in the text. Pipilitin niya ang kanyang pamamaraan. Okay? So when you think about it, that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. It is forcing its way. The kingdom of God is forcing its way. On the other hand, the second part of the verse, many people are taking it by force or attacking it. What is the meaning of this? Taking it by force or attacking it is presented as if People are attacking the kingdom of God because they are rushing towards it, pressing from all sides so that they can take possession of its blessings. Yung mga tao, para ina nila, 
not in a negative sense, but in the sense of rushing towards it. So whatever blessing can come from this kingdom, they can take possession of that. Those who were unfit for God's kingdom want to enjoy God's blessing. According to Matthew Henry, those who will have an interest in the great salvation will have it upon any terms and not think them hard nor quit their hold without a blessing. Ang magandang image rin siguro dito, do you remember when Jacob wrestled with God? At ang sabi ni Jacob, I won't let you go until you bless me. So ganito ka-eager yung mga tao to have this blessing. Sa second verse na tingnan natin, Psalms 154 verse 4, One generation commends your work to another, they tell of your mighty acts. So anong ibig sabihin naman ito? It is, it is like conversation between two generations. There is an indefinite continuance and the mercies of God is passed on from generation to generations. So giving these insights together, what can we come up in order to overcome these continuities and disruptions? Ano ang pwedeng makuha natin prinsipyo dito? Para mabigyan tayo ng, uh, ng motivation that we can overcome the possible discontinuities and disruptions caused by the things that we mentioned a while ago. First, we have an intergenerational God who forcefully opens His kingdom to each generation. I believe all of us heard the phrase, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This phrase encapsulates an intergenerational view of God. Hindi lang sa mga ninuno po, kundi para sa akin din. At hindi lang para sa akin, kundi sa susunod ko pang mga generasyon, ang Panginoon ay para sa bawat generasyon. God belongs to every generation and makes His presence known by offering an answer to the generation's deepest hungers. In the Old Testament, the focus was obtaining the promised land. Yung pinangako ng Panginoon kay Abraham to set up the earthly kingdom at na set up yung earthly kingdom. But eventually, na-divide yung earthly kingdom ng mga Israelite during the time of Solomon. In the New Testament, the people are looking for the kingdom of God itself. They anticipated the Messiah. God works in a fresh way, going beyond generational trends while offering the same covenant of salvation to all. Yung mga pangako ng Diyos sa Old Testament at sa New Testament ako ay bahagi ng covenant kung ang mga tao ay maninig, mananatili na sila ay under ng Panginoon at ang Diyos ang kanilang sasamayin. And we are included in that promise and covenant. God knows the every point in each generation so that God Himself can speak to them. And the best, I think one of the best unit that appears that God belongs to different organization is the family unit. Amen? Family unit. Many grandparents, mother, mother and children. Nasa mind ng Panginoon, ang family. And He shows Himself through that family unit. Second point that we can uh, extract from the verses that we talked about. Ago. God raises and employs individuals who are eager to make His kingdom come. A paraphrase of uh, one of Charles Wesley's quotes says, God buries His workers, but His work continues. Again, that is a broad 
serving biblical narratives. In the Old Testament, you have the patriarchs, prophets and priests, and then kings. All of them, through their function, through their functions, testified about God. In the New Testament, you have John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus' ministry. And then, there are individuals in the life of Jesus who I believe were more prominent than prophets and priests. Who are they? The disciples. The first disciples are the ones who became the apostles and that were responsible for planting the church. So, at different ages, God raises people who can navigate the context and situations of, of their communities so that they can speak the spiritual truths given by God to their people. In effect, the message of God can be presented in effective ways despite varying situational conditions and circumstances while being faithful to its meaning. And in our generation, what are we facing right now? Sa mundo natin ngayon, I believe a lot of you, especially the teachers, have encountered the term VUCA. Okay, VUCA. Ano ba itong mundo natin ngayon? Ito ay mundo na characterized ng VUCA. Okay, next slide po. We're living in a world, in a world characterized by challenges that are encapsulated by the acronym VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Okay? Ito pala yung sabi ng mga writers how they define our situation today. Volatile changes in the world are continuous, affecting all areas at once, according to a certain writer. In addition to that, yung uncertain, the present is difficult to describe. The future cannot be determined. And then complex, many interdependent factors so and are so messy that they lead to chaos and ambiguous because no situation can be fully understood. How can the church respond to this definition of the word of the world? Okay? And I believe if this is the context of the world right now, we need a generation that is smarter than the previous generation. We need a generation that can uh, can head, ano, can can, uh, can relate head on to this uh, to this situation. And while thinking about this, I remember the word generation alpha. Do you remember that? Ano? That is the generation alpha. According to according to an article, the person who coined the, the term gener generation alpha, Mark Pindel, says it will be the most formally educated generation ever, the most technologically supplied generation ever, and globally the wealthiest generation ever. Okay, this generation will be more brilliant than us. And those who belong to this generation are born from 2010 to 2025. Okay, so, kung meron po kayong mga anak, siguro, years old na ngayon. They belong to that, to that generation. They are approaching the era of artificial intelligence. They have access to information that is incomparable to anyone previous to them. And another writer said, the tables are turning and the kids are the decision makers or at least a very powerful influencer. Kaya ngayon, importante yung social media. Mga batang bata, but they are called influencers. They influence the discussion in the platforms, social media platforms. And to, to make this more uh, to make this closer to home, let me share to you my experience with my daughter. Whenever I give instruction to my daughter, she answers, Daddy, why are you controlling me? 
<laughs> when I give instruction, I have to give the people to the people of the people why are you controlling? She has a clear sense of autonomy. She knows what she wants to wear. Hindi nakikinig sa sinasabi ng mas matatanda. And once I was giving uh, a certain command for her well-being, she said to me, Daddy, I'm responsible for myself. <laughs> I'm responsible for myself. Something that I cannot think of. That a child could say to a parent, mas lalo na kung ako yung baka, no? hindi ko masasabi sa parent ko. Okay. Pero mayroon ba? Kids know how to speak these things to their parents, probably to the, due to the access of the information. I remember meron isang bata. Right? I am so amazed because the kid, the child, could speak fluently with a British accent. Bata Pinoy. Alam mo sikreto? Kakapalo ng Peppa Pig. Hey, Bobby. And Harry Potter. Harry Potter. They can speak British accent at a very young, very young age. But the positive side is this. We are in a VUCA world and God is raising brilliant children. Children who would be better than the previous generation. So just like how God raised leaders and evangelists and theologians in the past for the needs of their particular generation, such as Martin Luther, the Wesley Brothers, and Billy Graham, I believe the Lord will raise a new set of leaders for this generation. Amen? That's why we are investing so much time, resources for our youths and our children because we believe they are the future, not only of our church, but also of our communities. So I always say to those, to the youths, you know, uh, leader kayo someday, you will be leaders in the businesses, in the politics, the political arena. Makayang iba sa inyo, mag-a-artista. Pero sabi ni Serius, magpapasto na lang. So, God is in the process of praising leaders. When the faith community seems stagnant, or when it is in danger of departing from its foundations, we can be sure that God is raising up someone to put into motion the steps of God for that particular age. And the third point, people who want to take the blessings of God's kingdom by their own terms and the church or the children of God are in the position to lead these people. We have a special task given by God to lead the people who want to partake of God's blessing for their lives. And I believe, brothers and sisters in Christ, the unchurch, yung tinataan natin unchurch, they desire experiencing God's blessing, but not through a religious packaging. When you talk about them, about their life, about their needs, they have faith in God. But once you inject religious terminologies, medyo na ayaw nilang ma ma-identify ma sila with being religious. But you can see the hunger for God sa mga tao mo. Let me tell you a story, a personal story. When I was in college, someone tried to to disciple me. May naglakas loob mag-disciple sa akin. But I grew up in a church. All throughout my life, I was Raised a Methodist, my mother was a church worker, but this person, a new Christian, tried to contact me and he wanted to set appointments so he could disciple me. Of course, out of, you know, being polite, I want to be friendly, I agreed. Okay, that's me. So this new Christian tried to meet me, tried to set a schedule, prayed for me, 
And he was actually teaching me some biblical principles. At what at, at one time I did, I decided to show during our conversations that I am not interested to what he is saying to me. You know, there's spiritual pride. I'm saying to myself, sinasabi ko sa sarili ko, ito ko lang sinasabi niya sa akin. Alam ko lahat ng mga to, lumaki ako kristyano. And I decided to show I'm not interested. And thinking I could even explain spiritual principles to him better than how he is doing it to me. So I decided I, I was not paying attention to him. But you know what he said? And it arrested me. Okay? Sa akin, Jonathan, hindi tayo yung bibiruan dito. Alam niyo ba para buhusan kayo yung malamig na tubig? I was a person who grew up in a Christian family, in a Christian home. But living out the form of discipleship that this person is manifesting in his life cannot be found in my life. This person is so eager to share God's word. The person is so eager to pray for me. Hindi makita sa akin na lumakay sa simbahan that kind of eagerness. Ano Christian? And I don't know, maybe along the way, the way why we are growing up as Christians, but on fire and then to our life fire, magkakaroon ng fire. But I was arrested that time. My attention was arrested that time. By this person who is so eager tell about God that he encountered during his college life. That he is willing to share what he believes to someone who grew up in a church like me. So I believe the most effective way to share, to share God's kingdom is embodying the faith genuinely. Friends, as we end, let us have this personal reflection question. How is God manifesting His kingdom both in my private and my public life? Am I allowing God to use me with an operating spirit and open heart? What am I praying for about my church right now? Let us all pray. Lord God, we thank you because you have called us to be your body here on earth. Lord, continue to move in us and through us, Lord, so we can testify about your goodness, about your love, about your power. There are many challenges that we are facing right now. The whole UFC is facing right now, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, that you will guide us according to your goods, as we navigate how to overcome these challenges. We have challenges for God also in our secular lives, in our peer groups, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to testify about your saving grace. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus' mighty name.